haven't seen her perform, you're missing out. Uh, my husband has nicknames for some of my students, and his nickname for Katie Chance was Pipes, because this girl can sing her face off. She is so talented. Uh, and so if you haven't seen that, you're missing out. But when Katie came to FCA, she was very nervous and was still trying to figure out who she was and how to navigate the world um, for who she was. And when she left here and went off uh, to get her degree at Lipscomb, which she did with flying colors and incredible grades um, and performances under her belt, uh, she was a totally different person. Uh, and then she is now getting a master's degree at Vanderbilt University. That is no small thing. Um, uh, and teaching here full time in all of her copious free time. So um, I want you guys uh, to really listen. She is gonna share something very personal from her journey uh, that I think actually is going to bless a lot of you and teach you a lot. Uh, so I want you to give your full, she's really nervous. She's a theater kid. I don't know what she's nervous about. She's gonna do just fine. Uh, but she's real nervous. So I want you to give a warm welcome to Miss Katie Chance. Hi, good morning, y'all. I'm excited, y'all. This is something I've wanted to do ever since I was a student, and now I get the opportunity to talk to y'all and just, you know, speak into your hearts and your souls and talk about how Jesus has worked in my life and how I think my experience as a believer and as a person um, and a creation of him can inspire y'all. So a little bit about me. Yes, I used to be a student here. Now I am a student at Vanderbilt. I graduated with my degree at Lipscomb. Um, but another big thing about me is that I have a little condition called Autism Spectrum Disorder. Everyone go, ooh. Everyone go, ah. Oh. Now, how many of y'all know what autism is? How many of y'all have ever heard of it? You don't even have to know exactly what it is. How many of y'all are like, I know exactly what autism is? A few less hands. All right, so um, autism is a really big part of my life. It is a condition that follows me throughout my entire uh, development and career and personality. It's something that's really ingrained in me. So I call myself autistic. Um, and so I just wanted to chat with y'all about what it is and just continue this message of y'all being children of light and being children of Jesus and how my experiences and my differences can influence the world for the better and how your differences can influence your lives for the better. So first of all, here's what autism is. Um, according to all the diagnostic material and doctors and all that. So autism is a developmental disorder, which means that it affects how someone grows. Um, and symptoms begin to appear within the first three years of life. So I started experiencing symptoms and um, differences in my life when I was about two years old. Um, and autism really is something that looks different in everyone. That's why they call it a spectrum disorder. It's kind of like a rainbow. Every color, every little person, everything is a little bit different from each other. Um, I've heard the quote before that when you've met one person with autism, you've met one person with autism. So I am very different from someone else who might be autistic, let's say. But there are two things about autism that make it what it is. Number one, People who are autistic often have difficulties in social communication and interaction. So here's what that might look like. It may look like someone who can't always understand social cues and facial expressions. It might be someone who has difficulty seeing the gray area in things. They see things very literally, take things very literally, see things in black and white. It may also look like someone who is either partially verbal or nonverbal completely. And that was kind of what my thing was. I didn't speak until I was four years old. And now I talk all the time. Um, a second thing about autism is that it involves restricted and repetitive behaviors, interests, and activities. So that may look like someone who uh, repeatedly flaps their hands. Have you ever, ever seen maybe a portrayal on TV of someone who flaps their hands a lot? 
or someone who spins around a lot, or someone who says a certain line from a movie over and over again. Or it may look like people with special interests. We call that in the autism community special interests, which are things that, and topics that people are really, really passionate about. So my special interests are, I love Disney, I love theater, I love Peter Pan, I love Spider-Man. I could talk about Spider-Man all day long. Uh, done tons of research. Um, but it comes to a point where sometimes I'm talking about a subject over and over and over, and it's really difficult for me to talk about something else. So that's my experience. Now here's how I was diagnosed. So most people who are on the spectrum get a diagnosis. Some people self-diagnose. And so this was my experience. So I was born in 1998, the 90s. Um, <laughs> So I lived in Brentwood all my life. I was raised here, have two wonderful parents, also had my Nana living with me, my granddad living with me, and I was a normal baby. So in fact, I think I crawled earlier than most kids my age did. But then when I was around two, my parents started noticing that I was a little bit different. I wasn't developing the same way as my peers. So first of all, I didn't respond to my name at all. I didn't point at things. I didn't make eye contact. I would line up all of my dolls in a very specific order. Remember the restricted activities and interests? It had to be a very specific order or I would freak out. I hated strangers. I hated hugs. I hated being in new places. And again, I was nonverbal. I didn't talk at all, which was very, very weird for a two-year-old to not be talking at all. And so my mom, took me to tons of doctors and she had to fight for me. She had to say to doctors who didn't know a lot about autism, my child is different and there's things that she needs and she needs support. And so eventually she got her hands on some, some specialists at the Vanderbilt Kennedy Center, which is where I am taking classes now and uh, volunteering now, which is crazy. Um, but that's where I got diagnosed and then I started getting lots of resources and support to uh, help me have a better quality of life. And the support of my parents and the support of the specialists who worked with me is why I am here today being able to talk to y'all. When I got diagnosed, my mom was really, really scared. She didn't know what autism was. This was something very new to her. And there was not a lot that people know about. There's still not a lot that people know about it. We don't know what the cause is. We don't always know how to treat it. Sometimes people wanna find a cure. We don't have a cure. And so she came home really, really distressed and she was really, really worried because autism was a really scary thing for her to hear. My dad reassured her that God had created me for a reason. And he created me with my certain traits for a reason. We didn't know why, but their job was just to love me. And again, that's why I think I'm here today talking to y'all, is because they love me. So after my diagnosis, again, got tons of therapy, tons of resources, had accommodations all through school, came here, um, found a really good community here, went to college, went to master school. Now I'm back here. And a question that has followed me throughout my entire life is this question about, okay, God, hey, did you make me autistic? When I was born, and you were creating me up in heaven, and you were mixing the pot, putting all my traits in, did you make me the way I am? Did you make me so that I struggle to communicate sometimes? That I struggle to be in big groups sometimes? That I get really, really obsessive and passionate and anxious about stuff? Did you make me this way? And if so, why? Why do we have autistic people? Why is this something that people struggle with? And to that, 
I lean towards the answer of yes. I think God did make me this way. And I'm going to explain why. So, in our world, we tend to have a lot of assumptions about what autism is and what autistic people are like. And sometimes they're correct, and sometimes they're a little skewed. So here are some assumptions that I have noticed in my life. Number one, people thinking autism is a bad thing. Do you sometimes see movies and TV of autistic people struggling and really dealing with stuff? And it, again, it's called a disability. So there's a negative connotation already with the fact that it's called a disability. And I've even met parents who are really, really scared to get their kids diagnosed because they're scared of what'll happen if their child is autistic. To call their child different, to call their child something that is atypical. And I think of that and I think, well, God created me this way. He created all these traits about me and he wasn't doing it to be bad because I know my God isn't bad. He has things that are planned for me. He has good things that are planned for me. So he made me this way for a reason. And then I also look at all the strengths of how I am autistic, all the strengths that come with that, that sometimes we don't talk about. Here's a couple that I like. A lot of autistic people are really detail oriented. Sometimes Y'all as neurotypical people, that's someone who is not autistic, sometimes just all look at the big picture. You're not really looking at the details. Autistic people love details. They love listening to the same vocal track over and over. They love feeling things. They love sensory stuff. Um, looking at something for a specific amount of time, hearing something over and over again. Um, the sensation of, you know, maybe the seat on uh, the bleachers right there, how rough it is, or how slick the gym floor is, stuff like that. Really, really cool stuff, how our minds work. Another example is all these special interests that we have, all these passions. You know a lot of celebrities are autistic? Yeah. Um, Daryl Hannah, one of my favorite celebrities, um, who was in the movie Splash back in the 80s with Tom Hanks, is autistic. And I think one of the reasons that she's really, really good at what she does is because she's really, really passionate about acting. She just loves it. And the reason that autistic people are really, really talented and really, really good at stuff is because they're passionate about it. God gave them this thing about them that because they're really passionate about it, they're really, really good at it. <laughs> um, and so... When I look at that, when I look at now that I'm a theater teacher, I know that my strengths are really good as a theater teacher because of my autism. And we all have different strengths about us, y'all. We all have different things that make us special. And I know that sometimes you hear as a kid, you're special, you're unique. And it's kind of bleh. But really, it's, it's really, really good to talk about our differences. If we look at scripture, we learn that God uses all of our differences in many different ways. If you go into 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, uh, you will see Paul talking to the church of Corinth, which is a very diverse group of people. And at that time, there was a lot of division in the church. And so he talks about spiritual gifts and talking about spiritual gifts and all the gifts that God gives us through the Holy Spirit. And he uses the metaphor of a body. So here's what it says. Just as one body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we're all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, autistic or non-autistic. And we were all given the one spirit to drink, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Let me give another example of this. So let's say in the body of Christ, autistic people are arms. They do arm things, they say arm things, they think arm thoughts. They have the job of being an arm. And let's say neurotypical people are legs. They do leg things, they say leg things, they walk, they do the actions of leg things. And sometimes I look at myself and I see myself as an arm and then I see 
people who are legs, and I'm like, well, I'm not a leg. I thought I should be a leg. Why did God not make me a leg? Scripture says, now if the foot of the body, the still one body, this one community, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. Y'all, God made me an arm for a reason. He didn't make me a leg for a reason. He knew that he needed arms to make the world a better place. He needed my differences because he said they were good. And he needed legs for a reason. And he needed me not to be a leg. There's one other thing that I think is assumed in the world about autistic people and something that I don't love, something that I think is a big injustice in the world. One thing that I've noticed is that the world isn't always made for me. Not the world of God, not the kingdom of God, but the world that people have made for themselves is not always made for autistic people. It's not always made for people with disabilities. It's not always made for people who are different. You ever been in a building with a staircase and no elevator? Now people with wheelchairs are not welcome in that building because they can't use it. It's saying, hey, you're, you're not like these other people. You can't be here. You can't use this building. Sometimes the world gravitates towards the strengths of one part of the body. Let's use our leg metaphor again. So the world sees all the strengths of legs. They love legs. They want everyone to be legs. They're like, hey world, legs are powerful. Legs are good. Legs are what you want to be. If you're not a leg, sorry. It makes me feel lesser than in the world because I'm not a leg. You know what I mean? You ever see someone who is different than you, or has a disability, or maybe autistic. And even unintentionally, you see them as lesser than. You start to say, well, those traits about that person are not like me, therefore they are bad, therefore they're lesser than, therefore they shouldn't be there. And that stinks. Because the kingdom of God is not like that. Paul continues and he says, the eye in this body cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, on the contrary, those parts of the body that seem weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. Y'all. As a person on the spectrum, as a person who has been treated different all of their life, that is awesome <laughs> to be told that my traits as an arm, as a part of the body of Christ, sometimes seem weaker in the world of people, but in the kingdom of God, they should be held with special honor. God made me this way because he was like, hey, Katie, I need you to be this way, and I'm going to hold you up because your traits are special. And y'all's traits are special because y'all are different and God made you different because he thinks it's good and he needs you to be different to make the world a better place. That's awesome. I'm gonna give y'all one more piece of this verse and then we're gonna go to D groups. So that there should be no division in the body that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. If you see someone on the spectrum and you see someone that's different than you, instead of seeing them as lesser than or different, you should see them as different because they are. But I want you to go up to them and say, hey, I'm in community with you. 
If you're suffering, if you're having a meltdown and you're having an anxiety attack, heck, I'm going to suffer with you. If you're celebrating something, if you're really, really passionate about something, this one interest or this one topic, heck, I want to talk about it with you. We should celebrate that. One more thing before we go. I want y'all to just turn around and look at all the different people that are around you. This beautiful community. Think about all the different traits that make the person next to you unique. Their eye color, their hair color, the color of their skin, their personality, maybe conditions that they've had in their life, background, country of origin. And now look at yourself. Look at yourself and see what makes you different. What makes you unique? What has God given you that you can use for the kingdom of heaven? So when I look at myself as someone who is autistic and I ask, hey God, did you make me this way? And he answers to me, you are different and you're unique and you're clumsy and you don't know how to ride a bike and you have all these interests and special things about you. So yes, Katie, I did make you different and you're good. Thank y'all. Um, have a seat for just a second. Have a seat.